This is the redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus House Barriga, is abiding place. We are situated at number 30 Asani Street, close to Ilaje bus stop, Barriga, Lagos State, Nigeria. You are welcome to join any of our services, Tuesday Digging Deep by 6.30pm, Thursday Faith Clinic also by 6.30pm, and on Sunday by 7.30am or 9am. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media accounts on Facebook RCCG Jesus House Barriga, on Instagram at RCCG Jesus House Barriga. Come expectant and you'll be sure to share a testimony. Welcome to this evening's Begin Deep, coming to you from the redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus House Barriga, Area 19 headquarters, under Lagos Province 44. We bless God for your life and the privilege to meet this evening. I, I pray that as you listen, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Before we proceed, I'd like us to just worship our maker, our hall in hall, the God of heaven and earth, the one who reigns forever, the one who cannot fail the God who cannot lie, the God who cannot change. He remains the same forever and ever. Who is like unto thee, O oh Lord, who is like unto thee, O oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, Glorious in holiness, we are full in praises. Do him wonders, hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. We exalt in him because you cannot fail, you cannot lie, you cannot change. You are the God of grace. You are the God of all strength. You are the God that cannot lie. Father, we give you glory. We exalt your name this evening. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege to gather once again to hear your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will teach us by yourself in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your word you will send to us this evening will profit our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. This evening we shall be considering the topic, Understanding the Fear of God. Understanding the Fear of God. And our text shall be taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the old duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. Solomon, having considered all he had done, all he had acquired in life, the fame, the wealth, the wisdom, everything God has helped him to acquire, he looked at it and considered, he says, even after all this, I think the whole duty of man is to fear God. That the whole duty of man is to fear God because God is going to judge every man's work, whether it be good or bad. He says, well, the duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandment. And so, but we know that our God is a God of love. Is a caring God. He does not want any sinner to die. And that's why Romans 5, Romans 5 verse 8 says that how God commended his love towards us. While we are here sinners, it says Christ died for us. It says, but God commended his love towards us 
in that while we were yes sinners, Christ died for us. That's the uh, new uh, the King James version of the Bible. The New King James version says, "How God demonstrates His love towards us." It, it says that well, there is a demonstration. There was a demonstration of God's love, and it's still in existence to today. And that demonstration of God's love made Him to give His Son to give His life for us. Christ died for us, even while we were yet sinners. So, if our God is a God of love, and John 3, 16 says, God does not want, he, he, he gave his only begotten son because of the love he has for us. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, have eternal life. And so, if God is so caring, is so loving, he's loved us so much that even before we were just sinners, before we, while we were sinners, he died for us. Do we now really need to fear this God? Also, 1 John 4, 8 tells us that there is no fear in love. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So, if there is no fear in the love of God, who loved us so much and sent his son to die for us, then why must we fear him if there is no fear in love? Why must we fear God? That's the question. Do we even need to fear God at all? And if you are to fear God, what does this fear mean? Let's go. What is the fear of God? What does this fear mean? If you look at the Bible, the Bible, especially Genesis, um, Exodus, Revelation, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. If you look at those Bible passages, you find God always saying, "Fear God, fear me, fear me, fear me, serve me in reverence, in fear." And you would, you would ask, why? Why do we need to fear God? Now that we are under God's grace, now that the love of God is shared towards us so much that Christ died for us, do we still need to fear God? Even in this time, do we need to fear God? And you know that Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4, verse 16, says that we can now boldly come before God. If you read from verse 14, it says that we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. And because we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, it says we can, well, an high priest, we can now come boldly into the presence of God. If you can come boldly to the presence, do we now need to fear God? Now that we have access to come boldly before him. Let's see. Let's look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. We read verses 5 and 6. Why we need to fear God. It says, Then shalt thou understand the fear of God and find the knowledge of God. It says, well, it is in the understanding of what the fear of God means we are going to find out the knowledge of God. If we are truly going to know God, we have to know what first, fear him. He says, then shall thou what? understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the, wisdom, for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Praise the Lord. He says, Lord, for us to truly have the knowledge of God, we must, we must understand the fear of the Lord. We must, so that's, that means, Understanding what the fear of the Lord is, is important to us as Christians. It is important to us as Christians. Praise the Lord. So what is the fear of God? What is the fear of God? Fearing the Lord means to be in awe of his holiness. To understand the awesomeness of the holiness, the might of God. To give him complete reverence and to honor him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. Psalm 33, Psalms 33, verses 8 and 9. It says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. He says, well, let the whole earth fear the Lord. Well, let them all stand in awe of him. Stand, let us understand, we must understand the awesomeness of God's holiness, God's power, God's purity, the divine nature of God. And that is what the fear of God. So this means that the fear of God is not the fear that scares us away from God. It is not the fear that scares us away from God. Let's look at Revelation 14. Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. It says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, 
for the hour of judgment is come. Let's, let's, let's stop there. He says, that, and we know that Revelation is the prophecy of things to come, the book of Revelation, as written, as given to Apostle John. He says, I saw, and this is something that is yet to come. He says, I saw an angel. And what that angel says, talk, he, he says, he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory. Fear God and give him glory. That means that the fear of God is, to, is supposed to produce glory from our life to God. The fear of God is to what produce glory from our life unto God. If we fear him, then you will give him glory. You will give him the honor that he deserves. You will give him the honor that he deserves. So it means that the fear of God is not the fear that scares us away from God, but the fear that produces glory from our life to God. Praise the Lord. So if we consider that our God is a loving God, and so we do not need to fear him, we are just to relate with him like our brother, our sister, who we so much love and he loves us. No, we are, our, our life is to reverence God, is to give glory to God. Because if you say that, you don't need to fear God as man. That's what it means that you are saying you are like a man whom God, the doctor says, water is good for your body. You need to take water. And the man now considers that, okay, fine. I do not need to use cup to take the water. Let me just go and jump inside the lagoon. Let me go and jump in the ocean and throw caution into the wind just to have enough of the water because the doctor says water is good for me. No. That person is going to end up dying because he has refused to do it the right way, to use cup to take his water. He, he would rather jump inside an ocean just to have enough water. That's what is So it, it, that is how it is with our God. Even if our God is loving, if he's a merciful God, we must also tread carefully because he is also a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. And so we are to give him the honor and the glory that is due him as our father. As our father, we are to give him the honor and glory that is due him. Praise the Lord. So what does the fear of God entail? What does it entail? What are we to do? If we say we fear God, what does this entail? Let's look at, we are going to look at a few things that the fear of God entails. Number one, it entails deep reverence and love for God. Deep reverence and love for God. Malachi 1, 6 to 8. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. He said, a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise is my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? He says, Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that, in, the, in that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with it, or accept thy person? Say the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God that He will be gracious unto you. This has been by this has been by your means, and will be regarded your persons. Say the Lord of hosts. It says, if you offer the way now, speaking to Israel, he was speaking to his people and said, you people. He said, you, 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 do, you have not given me the honor that is due to me. He said, and they ask, he says, how have we not given you? He says, you offer blind sacrifices. You offer lame sacrifices to, to me. He says, give those things to your governor. If he would honor it, if he would receive it, if he would even accept you as a person. And so, if God demands that we honor him as a father, then who are we not to honor him as our father if we truly are his children? So, the fear of God entails deep reverence and love for God. Psalms 89, verse 7. Psalms 89, verse 7. It says, God is greatly to be, pray, to be feared in the assembly of his saints and, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. It says, he is greatly to be feared in the assembly, in the congregation of the saints. And we must have reverence of him, those who are what, about him, for those of us that are around him. We should what have reverence. We should reverence him because he is our father. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verses 28 and 9. 
He says, wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence. Let's take note. He says, what? We must, whereby we must serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. He says what? Because what? We have a kingdom. And the kingdom is the kingdom of God. God is the head of that kingdom. He says, therefore, let us what? Have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence. That means for you, your service to God to be acceptable, it must come with what? Deep reverence to God and godly fear. Because what? Our God is a consuming fire. So, you know, sometimes when you look at some of the things that happen around us, you wonder if the fear of God still exists at all. Last week, we, we, we read in the news, we saw protests around because a girl was raped in a church, almost right in front of the altar. And you ask yourself, what was going through the mind of those people who decided to commit that rape in a church? To commit a rape is a sin on its own. To now do it right in front in a church is a sacrilege. So for some people to have conceived that and carry it out right there, you, 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 will, you will know that they do not understand what the fear of God is. They do not understand what the fear of God is. Number two, it entails humility. 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 Total humility before God. Let's look at Proverbs 12, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. It says, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. It says, Lord, by humility and the fear of the Lord. So, you cannot fear God and you are not humble. Because your humility, your fear must come from your humble state of mind. So, you must be humble to be able to fear God. You must be able to put yourself low before God and what? Humble yourself totally at his presence. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. If you look at verse 6 of that Bible passage, it says, Humble yourself before, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So, we see that God, it is the requirement that we humble ourselves before God if we want to be lifted up in due time, if we want to be promoted in due time. And Philippians 2, if you read from verse 5 to 9, tells us what kind of mind Jesus had that made him to fulfill his plan and purpose for man. He says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. He says, be even being in the form of God, he, does, he did consider the robbery to be equal with God. And that's humility. God, he, was, he humbled himself, and that was why he was able to fulfill his destiny. Number three, it requires continuous exercise. Continuous exercise to do what is right. Acts chapter 4, the 24, verse 16. Acts 24, verse 16. Apostle Paul says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and to all men. So it requires continuous exercise. You cannot fear God today or do it one off and think that, yes, I have a right. It requires continuous exercise, continuous practice. And to practice is to do it continuously, have it con consciously also in mind, ensuring that we are what? Giving God the glory, the honor, the reverence that is due in praise the Lord. Why we need to do it consistently is because Man, originally, an unregenerated man, has the nature of sin. Man was conceived in sin and was given birth in sin. And so he cannot automatically honor God, except first he comes to God, acknowledge the awesomeness of God, and come to repentance before God. Then continually, consciously, do what the Bible says. Psalm 86, verse 11. It says, David says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. So David said, God, teach me. Because I want to. I want to honor you. I want to consciously give honor and glory to you. So I want you to teach me. I want you to be my teacher. To give honor to you. To walk in your truth. To unite, to, to, to unite my heart to fear your name. Amen. Number four. 
the fear of God what entails the consciousness of the presence of God at all times and the hatred for sin. If you actually fear God, it entails what the consciousness of the presence of God with you at all times and the hatred for sins. Romans 6, Romans 6, verses 1 and 2. Romans 6, verses 1 and 2. It says, what then shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? Now, Apostle Paul was trying to admonish us that as Christians, we cannot say because God, we have the grace of God and throw caution into the wind. We must consciously ensure that what we do not continue in sin. We do not continue in sin. Even though we have the grace of God abounding to us, we should not continue in sin because, Lord, we are already dead to sin. So we are conscious of the presence of God. So the fear of God is the awareness that we are, not, we are always in the presence of God. Let's also consider Psalm 76. Psalm 76, verses 7 and 8. It says, Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when, when once thou art angry? It says, Who can stand in your presence when you are angry? So, the consciousness of the fact that we are in the presence of God should produce the right thinking, should produce the right behavior in us, and should produce hatred for sin. From in our life as believers. It should produce what? Hatred for sin in our lives. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31. Hebrews 10 30, 31. It says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And that's why we should consider the fact that God is always present with us. Why? Because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. If you fall into the hands of your enemy, God can save you. But if you fall into the hands of of God. Who can save you? No one can deliver from God except he delivers by himself. So we should be conscious that we are always in the presence of God and so we must be conscious of, of what we do in his presence because his eyes are everywhere. Number five, a conscious observation of the word of God. As children of God, we are to commit our mind, our, our, our life to looking at the word of God because we need to have what a high regard for the word of God. That, that is very essential for our growth. And God himself instructed Moses to bring his people to him. He said he would like to talk to them so that they would learn to fear him. He wanted them to hear the word of God. So hearing the word of God, looking at the word of God is essential to helping us build our fear, our honor, our reverence for God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10. Deuteronomy 4, verse 10. It, it says, Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that, and that they may teach their children. He says, Lord, gather me to them. Uh, gather them to me. I want to speak to them so that they can learn. Why? So that they can learn to obey and to fear me. When they hear my word by myself, when they hear with their own ears, they will learn to what? obey me, to fear me, and also to teach that word to their children. So, as Christians, we must what? pay attention to the word of God. It is very important. We must pay attention to the word of God. In fact, in Deuteronomy 17, from verse 15 to 19, Deuteronomy 17 from verse 15 to 19, God instructed that every king of Israel was to copy the word of God Read the word of God. Learn the word of God so that they can learn to fear God as kings. For them to properly root God's people, God required them to copy the word of God daily. Read it daily so that they can apply their heart to that word. So that they can learn to fear God and rule in the fear of the Lord. So, as Christians today, in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, it says, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. It says, we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. So if we are real priesthood, as children of God, 
If royalty is in us, then as kings, we must pay attention to the word of God daily. Apply it to our lives. Read the word of God. Let it guide us. Let it guide us because what we are kings and princes. Number six, it entails responding positively to, the, to God's chastening. That is when God corrects us in his word. The fear of God will make us to respond positively to God's chastening. So when we rebel against God's holiness, we are, we are going to face consequences. And so, the fear of God, the reverence for God, the deep reverence, the deep honor for God should make us respond positively to the word of God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son, in whom he delighted. He says, when God corrects us, when the Lord corrects us, we should not despise the correction of the Lord. So the right attitude towards the word of God is what is, is a reflection of the fear of God in our lives. If you fear God, you will, you, will, you will have the right attitude towards God's correction. When God corrects you, you will take it with joy. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. Hebrews 12, verse 7. It says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? It says, Lord, if we endure chastening, it's a proof that we are God's sons. We are God's children. Because there is no son, there is no son that the father will not correct. So, if we fear God, we will have the right attitude towards the word of God. Because the word of God is important for our existence. Amen. Number seven. The fear of God entails a careful attention to ensure that we teach our children to fear God and obey him. It's all, it, it entails what? A careful attention to ensure that we teach our children to fear and obey God. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses one and two. It says, now, these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded and commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land, whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that, and that thy days may be prolonged. The Lord instructed Israel, that they are not only to fear God, but they should ensure that they teach their children the fear of the Lord. Meaning that the fear of the Lord should not stop at the individual level alone. It should extend beyond what to the family level, so that the fear of God can continue even in generations after them. So we are to ensure that the fear of God is taught to our children. Even as we fear God, we should not ignore our children. We should not ignore to teach them to also fear the Lord. The popular story of uh, Prophet Eli that we know, if he, had, he, he was doing the work of God, but if he, he forgot, he forgot, he ignored teaching his children to fear the Lord. And we know that it caused the generation a reversal of God's blessing and covenant upon that family. So we should ensure that we, we teach our children also to fear God. Praise the Lord. Now that we have looked at the, what the fear of God entails, we have looked at some of the things the fear of God entails. We are going to look at the values. The values. What value does the fear of God have? Does it have any value? What can we derive? Is there any benefit in it for us? Let's look at it. Number one. What value? It is the old duty of man. It is the old duty of man. According to our Bible text in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the old duty of man. So, the fear of God is the old duty of man. A man cannot afford to neglect his duty because his life depends on it. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 and 13. It says, And now Israel, 
What does the Lord thy God require of thee? He says, what is it that the Lord requires of you? What is, it that, what is that duty the Lord requires you to perform? He says, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his status, which I command thee this day for thy good. Say, for your good. So the, the performance of that duty, that duty, your old duty as man, he says, it is for your good. And that is what God requires of you, that you just fear him. And it is what? For your good. Number two, it helps us to weigh our words and actions. The fear of God in our lives helps us to be mindful of what we do as man. Should in our life help us to evaluate ourselves, evaluate our actions, our words, what we do, so that they do not go contrary to the word of God. Psalms 130, Psalms 130, verses 3 and 4. David says, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. David understood the fact that God cannot behold iniquity, and so he was conscious of allowing iniquity to reign in him. He was conscious, weighing, weighing his actions against the word of God. So, the fear of God in our life, the reverence for God, the respect we have for God should prompt us to weigh our actions, our, our, our words, our deeds before we do them because they will come with repercussion. They will come with repercussion. Praise the Lord. There is always the end result. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verses 7 and 8. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Says Lord, we should be mindful of what we sow because our actions, our deeds are seeds. So we sh the fear of God will help us to be mindful of what we sow so that we do not sow to our body but to our spirit so that we can reap everlasting life. So the fear of God should help us look at our life so that we don't go doing things without thinking first of what will be the effect, what is going to, what we are going to reap by doing that which we want to do. So, the fear of God is important. It helps us to weigh our words and our actions. The fear of the Lord sanctifies. The fear of the Lord, it sanctifies. As we know, sanctification is a process. As we learn to fear, imbibe the fear of God, allow the fear of God to guide us, to rule our heart, to guide our actions, our words, to, as we learn from the word of God, consider the word of God, we become daily sanctified. John 17, 17, John chapter 17, verse 17. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As we, and we know in, uh, in the first outline, we considered what the fear of God entails. And we said, it entails what? a careful examination of the word of God. It has to do with what? Looking at the word of God, allowing the word of God to rule us and accepting the chastisements of, the, of God through his word. As we do this continually, we get sanctified in the process. So it is us a way whoa, to sanctification. A man who lives without the fear of God can never attain sanctification. It is not possible because... He, does, he is not ruled by the word of God. And John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So, sanctification, as we consider the word of God, as we place our life beside the word of God, letting the word of God guide our life, we become sanctified daily. We become sanctified daily. Let's also read um, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. Proverbs 16, verse 6. It says, by mercy and truth is by mercy and truth. Iniquity is poured, and by the fear of the Lord, ma men depart from evil. It says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, and the farther you depart from evil, the more sanctified you become. The farther you de de depart from evil, it takes you forward. It moves you forward in sanctification. So, the fear of the Lord helps us. It, 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 it sanctifies us. Praise the Lord. Number four, the fear of the Lord brings confidence and frees 
from the fear of evil. The fear of the Lord. It brings confidence and it frees from evil. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 verse 16 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He says, oh, and we know, when we're talking about the fear of God, what it means, we says that the fear of God is different from the fear of evil. And that is the, that the fear of evil which, is, which has bondage, which has torment, according to, according to 1 John chapter uh, 4, verse 18. So, but the fear of God does not put us in bondage. It frees us from that bondage because not, it cannot, you cannot fear God and be in the fear of evil, of the devil. So, the fear of God frees us from the fear of bondage. It frees us from the spirit of bondage because, God, we, are not, we have not received that spirit of bondage again to fear. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. It says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, we are multiplied. It says, the church, they had rest. The church had rest. Even though at that time, there was, there was persecution from every side. Stephen was killed, all of it. But the church had rest. Why? Because they had, they, they, they had what? This, they had not received the spirit of bondage to fear. They had been free from the, the, from the fear of evil. And so, even in the midst of persecution, even with all that was happening around at that time, the church, Bible says, the church had rest. They had rest. They were edified. Why? Right? They were walking in the fear of the Lord. And so they were not bothered. They were not afraid of the things happening around them because of they were, the church was walking in the fear of the Lord. And so they had the comfort of the Holy Ghost and they were multiplied. Even though there was persecution, the church increased even at that time because what? the fear of the Lord was in place. And so the fear of evil could not stop them. Praise the Lord. Psalm 33, verses 18 and 19. Psalm 33, verses 18 and 19. He says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. He says, The fear of the Lord is upon those that fear, the, the eye of the Lord is upon those that fear him. So if the eyes of the Lord is upon you because you fear God, then there is no need to fear evil. You can rest in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You can be at rest even in the midst of trouble. Praise the Lord. No, lastly, number five, the fear of the Lord helps us as God's people to worship him effectively. The fear of the Lord helps us as God's people to fear to worship him. To truly be able to worship God, you must fear God. You must fear God. Praise the Lord. Psalms 22 verse 23. It says, Psalm 22, verse 23. It says, Ye, ye that, it says, ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. It says, well, those of you who fear the Lord, praise him. It says, to be able to praise God, to be able to worship him effectively, your praise must come from the fear of the Lord. You can, if, you, if you don't have respect for God, if you cannot add, uh, reverence him, if you cannot stand in awe of him, if you cannot appreciate him, then you cannot effectively worship him. You cannot effectively praise him. You cannot stand before God because the Lord can only be truly worshipped in humility. He can only be truly worshipped in humility. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Verses 6 and 7. Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. It says, that's, that, that was supposed to be John talking, John beloved. He says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give him glory. It says what? Fear God. When you fear God, what? what? You then give him what? Glory. So, the fear of God precedes the glory you can give him. Your life cannot glorify God if you cannot fear God. If you don't, if you don't have the fear of God in your life, it cannot produce worship from you to God. You, it cannot produce worship from you to God. It is not possible. 
to, to effectively worship God, to effectively praise God, you must what? have the fear of God. Because it is from the fear of God in you that your, your life produces honor to God. So if your life cannot honor God, you cannot worship God. Praise the Lord. A life that cannot honor God cannot worship God. So if you are listening to me this evening and you, are, you live in fear of evil, you live in fear of evil, the fear of the devil, fear of tomorrow, fear of any kind of fear, the only thing you need is to switch camp and come to God. And once you switch camp and come to God, you have the boldness to resist the fear of evil. You have the boldness to resist, for, to resist the fear of evil because of, in God, all you need to do when you are on the side of God is to fear God, honor God, and you are freed from the fear of evil. You are freed from any kind of fear. So if you are listening to me this evening and you are here to give your life to God, all you need to do now is just to lift up just lift up your hands to God and say, Lord, tell him to have mercy upon you. Tell him, acknowledge that you are a sinner. Ask him to forgive your sin. Ask him to use the blood of Jesus to wipe away your sin. Ask God to have mercy upon you and write your name in the book of life. Ask him to accept you into his camp so that you, can, you will no longer live in the fear of evil. But your life can truly honor him, can truly reverence him. Just ask the Lord to help you to have mercy upon you to wash you with, this, with the blood of Jesus and cleanse you from every form of sin and deliver you from the fear of evil so that your life can truly honor him, so that your life can truly glorify him. Just talk to him. Just talk to me. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I'm, I'm going to pray for you now, and I want you to say amen as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your children who have come to you to acknowledge you as God and saying to you that they want you to wash them with your blood, to have mercy upon them, forgive their sins. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you forgive their sins, Lord. I ask that you write their name in the book of life, and I pray that you help them to continually walk in you, so that their life can glorify you, can reverence you, can honor you, so that they can live in your fear and be freed from the fear of evil. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are pray. Amen. Lastly, before we close, I'd I just like us to take a prayer point. Let's just take that prayer point and ask the Father, I want to honor you with my life. Please help me. Help me to honor you. Let my life, let everything within me honor you. Help me to fear you, to give you glory, to give you honor that you deserve. As my Father, Lord, help me to give you the honor that is due you as my Father. Help me, Lord. Let the, your fear in my life produce reference, reverence from you from me to you. Let your fear in my life produce honor from me to you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you have been blessed by the word of the Lord to you this evening. I want to encourage you to give unto the Lord. You'll give your offering, your tithe. The account details will be shown on the screen later. I encourage you to give to the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I also want to encourage you to join us on Thursday for faith cleanly. That's the time we'll pray to God. And I pray that as you join and pray to God, the Lord will answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. God bless you.